Hey, time for a history update. So today is June 6th, it's a Saturday. Uh, might not mean much to a lot of folks, but if you know a little bit about military history, you know that June 6, 1944 uh, was the day uh, of D-Day, Operation Overlord, uh, the invasion of uh, Europe that began uh, in, during World War II when the Allies began invading Europe uh, to uh, take back what Germany had, had secured and seized uh, during the war. So a very pivotal day in the history of, of World War II. Uh, Plenty of films about it. Uh, most of y'all are probably familiar with D-Day, uh, at least in, in theory or, or for movies. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about one of our IU alums that was involved in D-Day. Uh, so uh, a guy named Richard Dietrich. Uh, he actually grew up just a few blocks from here. I'm sitting outside of the ROTC building uh, here on campus. Uh, he about uh, three blocks, four blocks that way. Uh, he grew up uh, at the corner of Dunn and Third Street, a little south of there. And he was one of eight uh, kids uh, in that house, seven of which went to IU. And so there was an article that was published about the, the Dietrich family having beaten a path to the campus uh, from their house with all their kids that had gone to IU. And Richard actually got a bachelor's degree in 1939 and got a master's degree in 1940, both in mathematics. And he was working for an insurance company when World War II started. And he uh, joined the military and got assigned to the artillery. Uh, with his mathematics degree, his job title was technically rangefinder, uh, which if you're familiar with artillery or you know anything about it, uh, back then a rangefinder not only did the calculated the distances, but did the trajectories and the angles and all of those things that we mostly do by computer today. Uh, but he was a human computer, uh, so to speak. Uh, he was assigned to the 319th Field Artillery, which used 75 millimeter pack howitzers, which is this thing right back here behind me uh, that our ROTC, Army ROTC uses uh, to fire off at events, particularly football games, uh, as a part of their work. So uh, the the. 319th was involved in uh, the liberation of Italy uh, and the retaking of Italy, and then they went to England to prepare to be involved with the D-Day invasion. For the D-Day invasion, they were tasked with supporting the 82nd Airborne. So when we think of D-Day, we often think of the amphibious landing. However, the 82nd Airborne was one of multiple airborne units that was tasked with parachuting behind the beaches, behind enemy lines, uh, and securing key points, particularly uh, bridges and towns and things like that. The 319th was the field artillery unit that was assigned to support them. Well, you can't parachute in field artillery the same way that you can people uh, in the infantry. So the answer to this was gliders. Uh, so they built these giant gliders out of uh, lightweight wood and they pulled them up over the English Channel and then cut them loose and let them basically take a one-way mission uh, over to France to land in France and then uh, and by land I really mean crash uh, there, there wasn't airports that wasn't the places they were going uh, they were trying to find the troops on the ground of the 82nd and land near them so they would at least have some coverage while they're pulling out their artillery and getting it set up but that didn't always happen very often uh, they crash in various places in fact one of the uh, commanders for the 319th his glider landed literally behind German lines and was immediately captured by the Germans um, so a very dangerous mission that they were on to do this. Uh, these pack howitzers uh, actually come apart and can be man portable uh, technically. It takes a lot of manpower and a lot of work to, to do that. Uh, but basically they crash the glider, they would pull these out and start setting them up to provide artillery support to the 82nd Airborne troops that were involved in this. Really dangerous mission, something probably wouldn't even happen today. Uh, but as, as one of my colleagues, one of our former uh, ROTC commanders reminded me that's why they're called the greatest generation. Uh, so the 319th uh, got in their gliders, took off on D-Day uh, to land behind enemy lines. Uh, as I said before, it's pretty dangerous. They had a 22% casualty rate on D-Day alone uh, from this dangerous mission. By the time Operation Overlord was over, they had higher than 40% casualties for the 319th. Uh, they, so they had a, a pretty uh, tough job, pretty dangerous job uh, throughout all of Operation Overlord. Lieutenant Richard Dietrich was one of those casualties. Uh, he died on D-Day. I haven't been able to find out the details as to whether he died, uh, you know, crash landed, uh, got caught by anti-aircraft artillery, or if it was, you know, actually on the ground in operations. Uh, but we do know that he died that day. He was one of several IU uh, alums and students uh, who participated in D-Day. Uh, well, one of dozens that did, and one of several that, that died that day. Uh, 
There is also a painting of him that was done by his brother after the war. Three of his, uh, there were three of them total that served in the army during the war. Uh, one of his brothers did a painting of him that was donated to the library. It's actually in Monroe County Public Library's uh, system. And I was hoping to be able to do that, but with COVID and everything else going on, I wasn't able to, to show the picture. Uh, but so I thought I would use uh, this artillery as, as my uh, backdrop for this. So uh, that's the story of Richard Dietrich and the sacrifices uh, and, and the types of missions and some of just one aspect of the types of missions uh, that folks were asked to do on D-Day uh, during World War II. So thanks for following us. Uh, thanks for, I'm going to put a subscribe button on here so that you can subscribe to our channel. Feel free to watch other videos uh, and we'll be back again next week with more IU history.